Hey Spurs fans, Paul Hotspur, hippie here. It's all going off here. The birds are going nuts. The sun's getting low in the sky. There's a whole load of popo -po action as well. They haven't caught up with me yet. Um, Spurs news, eh? Spurs news. Well, I saw uh, David Pleat has uh, said it resigned. He's resigned as scout. Um, he's been with the club a long old time as David Pleat. I, I'm not actually sure um, if his scouting was was good or bad. You know, 20 years we've 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 bought a lot of. Uh, how you going players in that time. I don't know if that was up to David Pleat or not. Um, but I, I remember when he was manager, because that's when I was a, a season ticket holder at Spurs. And, you know, it was a sort of transitional time for Tottenham. It became sort of the running thing for years after that, through the, the Jerry Francis years, that it was always a transitional for sp year for Spurs. Kind of started just before and just after David Pleat as well. So, um, you know, coming off the back of the early 80s success that we had, 81, 82 and 84, there was a bit of a changing of the guard with players at Tottenham. Not all of them I really agreed with. In fact, I don't think I agreed with any of them. So the likes of uh, Mickey Hazard, Graham Roberts, then Tony Galvin, um, Paul Miller, Ray Clements, they all sort of left towards the end of, well, by the end of 87, you can even count um, uh, the 87 season, Glenn Oddle and Ozzy had gone as well. Uh, but that uh, that season in, in charge, I remember the 80, 86, 87 season, where we came third in the league, got to the semi-finals of the Littlewoods Cup, and we got to the final of the FA Cup. I remember that as being a... A very entertaining year to go and watch Spurs. It was fantastic. We'd had a good year in 84, 85. Uh, we'd gone off the boil a bit, 85, 86. And of course, Steve Perriman left in 86 as well. Um, but then we came alive again. We came alive, 86, 87, with that five-man midfield. Um, with just the lone man of Clive Allen up front. Scored 49 goals that season. Uh, and that, I, I guess that was that was down to the manager, you know. That was a bold move. Uh, no one was re no one was doing five men mid midfield. It was four four two all over the place in England at that at that time. So you had um, you know you had Glenn and Ozzy, uh, Steve Hodge, Chris Waddle. Oh my lord, this is mouth watering me just thinking of it. Then you had, you had a couple of bit part players like Nico Klaassen, maybe Johnny Metcalf was before or after. Um, and Richard Goff as captain and uh, Gary Mabbott in defence Mitchell Thomas, Chrissy Hewton it was a damn good team actually it was it was so much fun to watch I watched a um, uh, a match from that year the other day it was uh, it was Tottenham Liverpool and spoilers we beat them 1-0 Chrissy Waddle goal and it was just so much oh, it just brought back memories watching it so it was all looking really good for Spurs at that point. We had a really nice, uh, long, unbeaten run at home as well. And then the wheels f f fell off with, you know, a silly scandal. You know, everyone knows what it is. I'm not going to go into it again because I just don't think it's it's relevant. Who knows if it was true or false or whatever. But what someone, you know, David Pleat wasn't going out there preaching morals and family values. He was a football manager, you know. I'm all for when politicians say, oh, back to basics, family values, and they get done coming out of a knocking shop, that's fine. But a football manager, as I say, who knows what was true anyway. Um, but the Sun newspaper, <laughs> vermin, scumbags, really uh, went to town on the whole story, and that put us back into transition. And uh, it, it was a few months before Terry Venables took over, but we had a really wobbly year the next year. And um, no surprise when, you know, your, your heart of your midfield has gone, Glenn and Ozzy and, uh, and Ray Clements retired as well. Um, so it was, it was a difficult job for old Venables to take over. So as far as David Pleat as manager of Spurs goes, um, you know, he tried something different. He tried something different. I think, um, you know, listening to a lot of players, I've heard some player, I've heard, I've heard one player or a couple of players say that they kind of sorted it out themselves, but then I've heard more players say that it was actually Pleat's idea to stick the five men midfield and have Clive up front. So hats off to him, man. 
gave us a load of uh, fun champagne football and Clive Allen. I mean, you go. I'm, oh no, I know it is on YouTube because I watched it. Watch all his goals from that season. He scored 49. I think I saw about 40 of them that year, going to Tottenham and away here and there. Um, but it's a smorgasbord of goals. There's out and out striking goals. There's goals where he's dribbling past people. There's goals where he's banging it in from 35 yards. For that for that season, he just absolutely came alive. And, you know, the service he had, the service he had, he probably owes Chrissy Waddle and Glenn Oddle a few crates of beer for that. But it was, it was fantastic days. So um, I don't know what the story is about whether Pleat's just retiring or... He's going to try something new. Um, but he's done a lot of hard work for Tottenham. So uh, so good luck to him. Good luck to him. Don't know if he's got I don't know if he's if he's up for much of a laugh sometimes. He seems quite a serious guy. Uh, but sometimes you just uh, need that kind of personality when you're a football manager straight down the line. Um, he told players straight when they weren't required. Some of them didn't like that. Um, but at least it was you know as above board like for players not in someone's plans instead of dicking them around short sharp sweet uh, sweet uh you're not in my plans anymore so you know it's harsh but football is a cutthroat business and uh it seems that pleat was at least pretty straightforward in his dealings with people which is which is pretty cool shame the way it ended um but next year would have been a dog's breakfast anyway and then we then we had uh, Venables come along and we got a couple of little signings like uh, Gascoigne and Lineker and that got us an FA Cup in 91. Hopefully, we're going to get another FA Cup this season. Maybe more. From, uh, from uh, you know, players around the camp like James Madison uh, saying he wants silverware. And I hear young Mr Bergvall is saying he wants to win the Premier League. That's the goal. And... Um, you know what, I don't mind hearing players and, and staff saying, because that is the aim, isn't it? If you're not aiming for that, what's the point? Well, what's the point? If you don't if you don't want to win the Premier League or you don't think you can, you know, every team, that's their goal. I don't care if they've just been promoted. You should be going for the top. So it's nice to hear that kind of language come out of a few people at, at Tottenham instead of the, Oh, it take years. Oh, we, no, it's no good. Oh, no, no, no. We're um, we're being very uh, provocative in some of our language. And you know what? Come the end of the year, if we win nothing, I suppose some people say that will bite them on the backside. But I don't reckon that's true. I reckon they'll just go again next year, harder and stronger, and learn from whatever mistakes they've made this year. It's a good aim. Yeah, Bill Nicholson. Got to aim high, haven't you? It's better to fail aiming high than succeed aiming low. And at Spurs, we set our sight at so high that even in defeat, there is within it an echo of glory. That's what we're all about at Tottenham. So well done, David. Thanks for... As I teleport to another mysterious location, of course, I forgot the forgotten man of Tot uh, Tottenham Hotspur, Paul Allen, in that midfield as well. He was a great player, was Paul. Uh, but with fun times. Anyway, till next time, folks. Peace and love, man. Peace and love, and come on, you Spurs.